I want to start off by taking you way back to 1987. My dad sold his company to Dairy Queen and he lost $4 million because he didn't have a plan at the time to protect his money. He didn't plan first. And even though most of you are never going to lose $4 million, if you've ever lost any money, you know that it feels pretty bad and it can hit you both emotionally and physically. And the stress from my dad's loss almost killed him. He ended up at uh, Cedar sinai Hospital and half of that time of the two months he was there, he was in the ICU, which is why I believe it's so important to plan first before you make any major financial decisions. My name is Mitchell Bloom of Bloom Financial. I'd like to welcome you to Financial Advice 360. And for the last 34 years, I've helped hundreds of people just like you plan first. And for the next 10 minutes, I'm going to share why this is so important, especially when we start to face stock market uncertainty and stock market volatility. I, I, and I, I want to start by having you visualize that you're in a chess match. You're 15 moves in. You're on good squares. You're capturing your opponent's pawns and you're winning. But suddenly, you can't figure out which move you want to make next. You can't figure out where to go and you start all of a sudden seeing threats and you realize that one bad move you could lose, but you have to do something. So you guess which move you want to make and then you just sit back and you hope and pray. That's probably not the best plan, but it's what a lot of investors are doing right now, which means that it's really time to review what we should do. So up to this point, in 2021, the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ, they've all hit record highs, which was mainly driven by coming out of the coronavirus lockdowns. And we've also had to help out historically low interest rates and stocks and real estate have been really some of the only places that investors can get any kind of return. When you look at savers, you know, people who have money in CDs and money markets and bonds and savings accounts, those, those accounts are, are paying such low rates that it's killing conservative investors with little or no returns. But when stocks rise like they have been, there's a point where investors start wondering how stocks can possibly keep climbing higher and higher if they don't really find enough reasons why they should be growing. And they start to wonder if prices are too high. You know, when they start looking at all the economic uncertainties and the threats, and what happens is a downturn kind of seems inevitable. So investors become kind of like our uh, hypothetical chess player. They're, they're in winning positions, but they don't really have a clear idea of what the next move is going to be. And suddenly, all these economic uncertainties, all these threats start looking scary. And that's why over the last few weeks, the markets have been wobbling back and forth as investors start wondering the main question of when. And that's what I'm hearing a lot lately. And that is the question I hear is, Mitch, when will this market run end? When is the next correction? When should we make another move? And so for the rest of this video, let's just take a couple of minutes and look at these questions like, are the, are the uncertainties that we're facing and what are, what are the impacts of that? And we will discuss possible moves. So stick with me to the end of this video here. And what I'm going to do is explain why one particular move is clearly your best choice. Now, at the top of that list is obviously the Delta variant and the fact that rising cases here in the U.S. could derail the recovery and it could lead to a dip in consumer confidence which that indicator really determines how much Americans are going to spend or invest over the next few months. So COVID is still out there and is still a major concern when it comes to the economy. But the next concern that I'm hearing a lot about is inflation. 
And if you've gone to the store lately, if you've gone to the gas pumps, you know prices are up. And that's because the economy has returned, but then supply and chains, uh, excuse me, supply chains are really kind of uh, in complete disarray. They're, they're a bad mess right now. We're seeing a record number in history of container ships sitting outside the port of Los Angeles. When I looked the uh, day before yesterday, there were 97 ships drifting out in the ocean between Long Beach and that port of LA. And the reason why those ships are sitting there is they're full of goods, but they cannot unload them quickly enough because the demand for consumer goods is so high, it's far outpacing supply. And as we know from the law of supply and demand, that when demand is greater than supply, prices increase. And when prices rise across the board, it causes inflation, which in turn makes it harder for people to be able to buy goods and services. It also makes it harder for businesses to hire new workers and to invest in new technologies and to expand into new markets. And the result is an economic slowdown at a time where we just don't want that to happen. And the Delta variant will do the same thing, which is the concern that happened last year, and that is interrupt global supply lines, which has already happened and it's happening again. And if it gets worse, this is not good. It, because if we see it cut supply lines even more, it will become stagflation, which is an increase in, in inflation combined with a decrease in economic activity. So to fight inflation, the Federal Reserve can raise rates, but their monetary policy has kept rates down. In fact, they're historically low, which has been an important factor in keeping the stock market growing, which is done pretty much since 2009. Now, if the Fed raises rates, they will take that fuel for the stock market to grow, to grow. They'll take that fuel away. And then the market could stall out and even go into a dive. So I'm hoping that we are able to see the Fed keep inflation under control. Another uncertainty, though, is a different type of contagion where economic or financial problems that become global you know, these are problems all over the world that they eventually spread to the U.S. So, for example, take what happened on Monday, September 20th, just this last Monday. And at one point, the Dow dropped over 800 points, mainly on news about Evergrande. Evergrande is a major Chinese property developer. They literally have $300 billion in debt. And they borrowed so aggressively, they wanted to build more and more homes and more apartments. And the problem is that they are contributing to a much larger bubble in the, in the Chinese property market. And now that market threatens to burst. With Evergrande unable to pay their debt, the concern is, is that the Chinese government will allow them to eventually fail, which is kind of ironic because if we go back 13 years ago this week, the U.S. government let Lehman Brothers fail. Now, if Evergrande fails, all their shareholders, all their bondholders, all their business partners, who are, you know, they're based all around the globe, they're going to suffer losses. And because the global economy is now a huge interconnected web, you pull on one thread and all the other threads might also come undone. And with the global economy still kind of coming to grips with COVID, now would not be a good time for this to happen. So my final point is this. It's easy to think of reasons why the markets might decline, but finding reasons that markets could climb, right now, it's just not that easy. When stocks began their rally last year, it was because there was so much to look forward to. Vaccinations were getting rolled out, the economy opened up, jobs returned, we could finally go out to dinner again, we could go on vacations, and, you know, all the other activities that serve as building blocks to our economy. But future growth is always predicated on future expectations. And right now, we're simply not sure of what to expect. Now, long term, I'm optimistic as always. 
but there are not a whole lot of reasons of obvious positives that we can be looking forward to in the short term. That's why markets have been so wobbly in this type of pattern. And that's why analysts and economists have been wondering if we're due for a market correction. And that's why investors are kind of like the chess player. They're desperately trying to figure out their next move. It's not based on some kind of algorithm or on a crystal ball that no one's ever seen before. It's, it, there are simple answers. And that answer is a, a simple solution that historically works market cycle after market cycle after market, so, market cycle. And I mean a, a full up market and a, a, and a bear market. And that philosophy or that solution is to simply stick with your investment policy. You stick with your investment philosophy because it's times like these. When you have your philosophy in place, you have something that you can fall back on when the you-know-what hits the fan, like it did Monday. Whether you're active, whether you're a passive investor, it doesn't matter what your investment philosophy is. You want to just stick with your philosophy and your financial plan. Now, as fun as it is to come up with clever metaphors, investing isn't like chess where you can move one time and you end up blowing or you know winning everything or losing everything. With investing, you're not gambling all your investments on one move. We create a plan first, we calculate your needs, we look at your risk tolerance, and we measure your success in terms of years and decades rather than months or quarters. And we know from history that there are absolutely two times when investors must be disciplined. The first is when markets go up, and the second is when markets go down. And the best way to deal with uncertainty is to not overreact. The answer is to invest long term. Now, this means that your funds need to be short term for goals like buying a car, remodeling the home, uh, you know, trips, major trips. Your money should not be invested long term for things that you need in the short term especially when we're facing the kind of uncertainties that we're facing right now. Now, over the next few weeks or months or quarters, we're going to see probably a bunch of scary headlines, but these are short-term uncertainties. They're short-term headlines, especially this time of year. So I'm going to leave you with this thought. If you're not sure that your current investments are the right strategy for you, or if you're not happy with your current investment strategy, right now is the time to make sure that you make your adjustments. So the next step, if you have questions, you have concerns, call my office, 800 way cool with a K. Get a consult, and this will help make sure that you are doing the right thing and that what you're doing is the right fit for you. So whether you're a current client whether you're a prospective client, this is a one-on-one -on -one time to get together and make sure that your investments are on the right track so that you don't have to worry no matter what the economy brings next. Remember, my dad lost a ton of money. He didn't plan first. He was like one of those cargo ships sitting outside the port of LA. You don't want to be that. You want to make sure you've got a strong tugboat, that you've got a good harbor boat to help you navigate into the dock where you're safe and sound. So now is the time to plan first. Simply, you, you deserve peace of mind right now. It's time to plan first because you deserve to be able to dream. You deserve to be able to thrive. You deserve to be able to aspire and achieve the things that you want to achieve right now. Right now is the time to plan first. Right now.